Hello, my name is Levi Thomas with Green Tech Auto. Today I'm going to show you how to program a JBD BMS with the Shaosheng Electric app. I'm going to show you how to do it on this 24 volt E Matrix battery that I installed in our other YouTube video. So go ahead and check that out if you want to see how to wire up a BMS. JBD makes a ton of different versions, everything from a 4S 12 volt up to the 7S to 14S, and that's 24 to 48 volt. That comes in a 20 amp to 100 amp continuous. There's other ones that are up to 250 amp continuous. That's about the biggest one that uses MOSFETs. Then it goes all the way up to this 300 amp continuous, which does 900 amps peak. That's too much for a MOSFET, so it has a big contactor and a precharge resistor built right into it. All the BMSs that say they're a smart BMS have Bluetooth built right into them, or they're going to have a Bluetooth dongle that plugs in and even a little wire antenna that you can kind of get outside of the box to have better connection. Other ones even have Ethernet ports or CAN communication. Now that will communicate if anything's too high or low of voltage or too hot or too cold to other devices like inverters or motor controllers to turn power on and off or to communicate to other BMSs so they can all work together to turn power on and off. Some of them will even have a switch wire that you can put a button outside of the battery box or even like up on the vehicle or on an e-bike to turn it off without having to open up an app. They can also have a heat connection that can control a relay to turn on a heat pad. That's good for cold climates, so you can heat the battery up before you charge it, say with a solar charge controller or when you plug into power. GreenTech makes a couple different BMSs that bolt on to Nissan LEAF modules. And this is a 48 volt BMS, so it uses a JBD BMS pre-installed in it. Now it already has all the settings and the parameters pre-installed on the BMS before you even get it. It also has fuses built right onto the PCB board or the 100 amp continuous 200 amp peak version has a big 200 amp fuse bolted onto the PCB board in line with the positive wire. If you're gonna buy a BMS from AliExpress, I highly recommend that you put a fuse. And then I also recommend that you do some sort of safety disconnect if possible, whether it's a plug in line that you can pull out really quick or a disconnect switch that you can put outside of the battery box or outside of the bike or car or whatever you're installing it on. JBD BMSs can be controlled by several different Bluetooth apps on iOS or Android. However, my favorite by far is the Shaosheng Electric app, which is a little elephant logo. Other versions are very limited and glitchy. The Shaosheng Electric on the iOS has all of the features built right into it. Now, because it has so many different safety parameters and different settings you need to set up, it got pretty bad reviews, and the early versions had a lot of Chinese-only sections, but the latest version is extremely well-made, and it's way better than the Dali or Ant BMS apps. Now, the Android version that you're going to get from the QR barcode that comes on the BMS or from the AliExpress like stores is going to be very limited. However, the manufacturer does make a fully unlocked version that has all the different parameters and all the controls that the iOS one has natively. It's pretty hard to get it from the manufacturer, so I'm going to go ahead and include a link to that in the description down below so you can download that. And I'll keep that up to date. Programming a JBD BMS can be pretty confusing, and that's why we made this video. You need to do it before you ever use it the first time. I'm going to show you how I did it on this eMatrix battery that we installed in our other YouTube videos. So let's dive right into that and I'll show you how to do that now. So now let's set some of the parameters. I've already gone through here and set all the parameters according to the Green Tech Energy website. Uh, the listing on this, the cells go down to 2.5 volts and can go up to 4.2 volts, but we don't want to do it at 100%. Typically it's best for the longevity of a battery to only do like 20 to 80%. So I'm, I'm gonna be a little modest here with these. But let's just go into the basics. So the first basic information here, I'm just gonna reset the name. I renamed it to 24 volt 50 amp E matrix. 
That way, if I've got more than one JBD BMS, when I go to look at the Bluetooth connections, I can know which one of my batteries I'm hooking up to. So that's an easy name. The rest of these I'm just going to leave alone. So let's go into the origin settings. So here you're going to set the actual capacity, which in this case is 123 amp hours. So here you're going to put in 123,000 milliamp hours, which is 123 amp hours. Under cycle capacity, I'm doing 100,000 milliamp hours, which is 100 amp hours. Because again, I don't want to fully discharge it all the way down to 2.5, and I don't want to charge it all the way up to 4.2. I want to stop it a little bit low or a little bit above the low and a little bit below the highest point. For full charge capacity, I also put 100,000 milliamp hours. Under cell numbers, we put 7 because it's a 7S battery. So let's go into the protection parameters. Under protection parameters, this is where we're going to set the high voltage and the low voltage settings. So the first one is cell high voltage protection. I'm setting it to 4150 millivolts. So that's 4.15 volts. And so to do that, we're going to put in 4150 and click set. Now that's the level where at the high voltage when it's charging, it's actually going to completely disconnect. And then the next one down is cell high voltage recover. So that's after it shuts off, it has to get below uh, 4100 before it will allow starting to discharge again. And that's what I want. So I do 4100 and set. I'm not going to allow it to go all the way up to 4.2 volts per cell again. I'm going to stop it a little bit lower than that. The delay is five seconds. The discharge low temperature protection again is negative one Celsius. So right below freezing discharge, low temperature recovery is zero. Uh, the delay I've got for five seconds as well. So balance settings. So the equalization voltage here, it starts at 3.9 volts, which is 3,900 millivolts. So when you're charging, once it gets above 3.9 volts, it will start balancing. The balancing accuracy is set to 15 millivolts, which is really close, and that's perfectly fine. If you do it too close, like too small of a value there, um, it's going to be balancing like all the time, like way more than it actually needs to. If you do it too far, they're going to get quite a bit out of balance. So 15 millivolts is a pretty good sweet spot. Turn on equalization. I've got it on already. The equalization method, there's static and there's charge. Charge only char only balances when you're charging. I want it static equilibrium, so it'll do it pretty much all the time. Let's go to the capacity voltage. So here it had it all the way up to showing 10% battery at like 3 volts. And then the full voltage was all the way up at like 4.2 volts. I don't want it to go all the way up to 4.2 volts. So I lowered this down where at 100% it's 1 point or it's 4.1 volts, which is 4100 millivolts. And then the absolute full voltage is 4150 millivolts. The end of voltage, that's the low. I've got it set for 2550 millivolts, which is 2.55 volts. So then here you can actually set in what do you want it to say at 90, 80, 70%, so on down to 10%. And so I've got it pretty equally um, spread apart here. So for example, at 10%, I've got 2600. At 20%, I put 2750. 30%, I put 2900. 40, 30, 50, so on and so on. So it's pretty equal all the way from 10 to 100% in what it displays. Connection resistance, I am not changing any of this. I left all these wires at the exact same length. If you were to cut them at different lengths and you know the ohm resistance at one wire was different than another, you could actually fine tune that in. But I kept all the wires at the same length. I use the same connectors, so I don't need to modify any of that. And then function settings, here you could actually turn on or off certain temperature sensors. I've got the one internal and the one external in here, so I'm leaving the temperature one and two on. Balance method, again, I'm leaving on static. 
I've got balance turned on, load detection on, and the switch function. Everything else I have turned off. I don't want any buzzers. Um, there's no handshake. I don't need the LEDs, anything like that. So I'm going to leave all those off. And then lastly is the system settings. And all of these I left completely alone except for the cell numbers. We set it to 7 because, again, this is a 7 to 14S BMS. This one we, we wired up to a 7S battery. If you were to do a 10S or a 14S or whatever you decide, anywhere between 7 and 14, you need to set that to the correct number of cells. So again, that's all the settings on a JBD BMS. Under controls, this is where you can actually turn on or off charging, discharging, turn on balancing, clear warnings or reset capacity. Under history, here it shows you a nice little graph of everything that's happened temperature wise, capacity and current. And then here you can see your voltage, your highs, your lows, and your current as well. And that shows the charging here that we're doing right now. And you can clear that curve or you can just watch it if you wanted to. And then under mine, this is my information. And you can change your account, device management, sign in or out, whatever you want to do. One thing I would recommend is even if it pops up to update firmware on a JBD BMS, Ant BMS, or JK, honestly any of them, you really never want to update your firmware. I have had issues with every brand of BMS updating the firmware, and then all of a sudden the, the Bluetooth didn't work or certain features didn't work on Ant BMS. It is notorious for like just shutting off all sorts of features if you if you update the firmware. So typically I just never update the firmware. Whatever it comes with, if it works, don't mess with it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this helped you program your JBD BMS with the Shaoshang Electric app. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see future videos that we post. Thanks.